Hello everyone, welcome to Modern History Lecture Series. Today in this video we will discuss about rise of Mysore state. Mysore, this kingdom was in southern India, the southern part, the peninsular part of our country India and it was very important kingdom in domain if we see politically it was very important after the decline of Mughal Empire and the situation if you see the location of this kingdom it was between the western and eastern Ghats between the western and eastern Ghats and was divided by Kaveri river it was a very prosperous in the field of agriculture as well as in the field of crafts and textiles so overall this area was very prosperous and very important and if we see the history it is believed that it was founded in 1399 and was ruled by Vodhya family initially was served as a vessel vessel means a feudal state of the Vijayanagar empire so earlier there was a Vijayanagar empire rule then Vodhyas came after that Hyder Ali then Tipur and after that the Britishers annexed this Mysore state this is the history of Mysore state after this if we see the first it was ruled by Vijayanagar empire the Vijayanagar empire also known as the Karnatak empire it was based in the Deccan plateau as we have seen in this last slide Mysore state it uh, this kingdom was a plateau so Vijayanagar empire also known as the Karnatak empire it was based in the Deccan plateau region in the south India in 1336 it was established by Harihara one Okay, he was the ruler of Vijayanagar Empire and his brother Bukka Raya, one of Sangama dynasty. And this prosperous kingdom of Vijayanagar Empire was later ended in the Talikota battle, the battle of Talikota. We will see about this battle in brief in next slide. Hyder Ali established important empire after the Vodhyas. Hyder Ali he established an important empire at the same place where I've seen where I've shown you in the map at the same place in which Mysore was the main province. After this, this is the map of Vijayanagar Empire. Here you can see the position of Vijayanagar Empire, which is at the same place where in the last map Mysore was shown. So Vijayanagar Empire and Vijayanagar Empire ended in Battle of Talikota which took place in January 1565. Nearly established Vijayanagar Empire was established in 1336 and ended in 1565. This battle it was fought between Vijayanagar Empire and the Deccan Sultanates which resulted in the defeat of Vijayanagar Empire and in this battle 70 year old Rama Rai who was the commander of this battle from the side of Vijayanagar he died so most of the commanders who were very brave they died in the battle and Vijayanagar lost its shine and after Vijayanagar who came Vodhyas so first Vijayanagar ruled this state then Vodhya dynasty they formed independent state in the state in the region of Mysore then regarding this battle of Talikota this battle Talikota it's the name of the place this is situated in the northern Karnataka okay this is Vijayanagar in the northern Karnataka about 80 kilometers southeast from the city of Bijapur okay this is the city of Bijapur from here 80 kilometers to the southeast from the city of Bijapur so here this battle was fought between Vijayanagar and Deccan Sultanates in which Vijayanagar was defeated and this led to the decline this led to the weakening of the empire and after Vijayanagar who came Vodhyas came they ruled the state of Mysore after Vijayanagar Empire then later on with their decline came the Hyder Ali, Hyder Ali Empire after Hyder Ali Tipu Sultan given the rule again Vodhyas were given the authority over Mysore under the tutelage of Britishers and later on the kingdom was incorporated into dominion of India after the independence from the British rule. Vodhya used to consider themselves from Yadava dynasty descendants and in 1704 Mysore king he accepted Aurangzeb suzerainty Aurangzeb that is the Mughal suzerainty and they started giving tax to the Mughal empire and it all started in 1704 then from 18th to mid 18th century the ruler the king was Chika Krishna Raj 
but he was mere a puppet in the hands of his minister devaraj and nanjaraj they overtook the whole control of the empire and during his old age time devaraj he left his post and now the whole rule was under nanjaraj and he was the administrative and financial minister in mysore state so the overall power was under nanjaraj and during his time hyder ali really was able to establish himself as the de facto authority of the kingdom so what happened that so many wars were taking place so in 1761 finding this opportunity in this all the wars in the mysore state an army commander named hyder ali really, he establishes de facto authority over the kingdom so what happened till now first in the mysore state there was vijayanagar empire after that came the vodaya dynasty and during the vodaya dynasty the two minister nanjaraj and devaraj they overtook the power of the overall empire from the vodaya's king chikka krishna raj and under nanjaraj came the hyder ali who overtook him and took the control over the empire regarding hyder ali what is said that he was the sultan and de facto authority of the kingdom of mysore in southern india he was very capable we will see about his administrative tactics later on so he had a distinguished military tact he had a diplomatic skills as well and it brought the attention of the mysore rulers and about the birth of hyder ali he was born it is said that he was born in 1721 in the south mysore so at a place known as budi kot of polar district in mysore uh, regarding his birth it was said that he was born in 1721 according to few records and in the southern mysore it's the place was budi kot of polar district in mysore and as he was as he was very capable and diplomatic with his these skills he drew the attention of the mysore ruler and later on he rose to the post of commander in chief to krishna raj vodyar too so if we see his ancestry his ancestors they were foreigners who had settled in delhi and later on they came to the southern mysore to the southern india part and he himself was illiterate he was not educated but he earned the favor of nanjara through his military tacts and diplomatic skills hyder ali really, if we see his education hyder ali really was illiterate but he was again i am telling you that he had so many skills he was diplomatic military he was a good soldier that he had drawn the attention and favor of nanjaraj after this in 1749 hyder ali started his military life under nanjaraj and he was recruited first he was recruited as a soldier in mysore state army during the rule of krishna raj vodyar 2 and then in 1755 he impressed by the hyder ali capability and bravery nanjaraj appointed him as the forgedar of dindigul so he was progressing day by day and slowly hyder ali he became so powerful and he became the commander of the mysore state he overtook the whole of the command of the mysore state and in 1761 he overtook whole power of empire after the death of nanjaraj so you can see that from 1749 where he was he started his military career under nanjaraj and then in 1761 he became the de facto ruler of the mysore state so this was about the progress of hyder ali then if we see the administration of hyder ali hyder ali he was a very good administrator though he was illiterate but he had so many skills and tact first of all what he did after coming to power he reorganized mysore army and he also took steps to train army on the european lines so you can see that he was so far sighting people that he overtook the that he tried to organize his army and then he also organized medical aid to the fighting soldiers in the war which was not available earlier then Uh, he introduced modern artillery events so he overall organized the mysore army then with 
with the aid of his army he tried to suppress all similar state who were opposing hyder ali like bidnur sundi sintur kinara and malabar these are the places in the southern india and they put check on granting any more jagirs a reckless growth of jagirs were checked by hyder ali but one thing what he did that was that he collected heavy tax on the common people because he was trying to expand the territory and during the time when he overtook the rule in 1761 we have seen in the last slide that hyder ali took the power in 1761 so during 1761 to 1763 for this time period he won so many places as sera hoskote dod belapur etc Uh, Gulibanda, so many places, and during this period, he also conquered important town of Bednur, and he named it as Hyder Nagar. But if you are fighting with so many places, but the same here that if you are trying to expand your empire, and so many wars are taking place, you need money for that. So from where this money will come? That is, he took recourse to he. that is he imposed heavy taxes on the common people and he started collecting booty of at the various place booty means that after war what you collect from the one area then regarding marathas regarding marathas marathas under the peshwa madhav rao they attacked mysore and mysore was defeated after this mysore had to enter into a treaty with the marathas in 1768 1768 treaty with marathas they had to enter into this treaty according to this treaty treaty then after this they had a struggle with the nayars so what happened that when hyder ali forces they were passing through the balam cleft and they reached the malabar coast and they also had to face struggle with the nayars what happened when they reached the malabar coast then what happened that nayars they put strong resistance they put they were against hyder ali they put strong resistance but hyder ali he occupied calicut and he imposed heavy land revenue on over all the entire coastal area over all this entire coastal area so what he did he captured calicut captured calicut and he put heavy land revenue over this area but nayars they continued their struggle and they continued their struggle for total 4 month after which hyder ali had to withdraw from the calicut then hyder ali also planned a campaign to annex travancore this region but involvement of british it complicated over the overall situation there were in all four battles during the time of hyder ali there were total four battles fought between english and mysore four battles four four anglo mysore battle of which two took place during the time of hyder ali so the first anglo mysore war what was the reason english they were conscious of increasing power of mysore 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 under the leadership of hyder ali they were trying to expand their empire the overall influence of hyder ali or of the mysore state was increasing and english they were conscious of this situation so hyder ali was aware of this consciousness of english so he tried to alliance with marathas and nizam but earlier what was the situation earlier what happened that earlier english as they were conscious of the situation they tried to join hands with the nizam of hyderabad and the marathas but hyder ali he had a diplomatic skills he he kept the nizam and marathas out of the confrontation then english forces they invaded mysore from bombay side and on other front the english army from madras they captured the southern eastern part of mysore but they were in dearth of food okay because of for want of food they found itself in trouble english people english army hyder ali he took advantage of this difficulty of english forces and he launched an attack on arcot after this hyder ali plundered villages whatever village comes to his way and english they were panic stricken 
for the peace and they signed a treaty in 1761 and this treaty was Treaty of Madras. Treaty of Madras was signed in 1769 between English and between Mysore state. Treaty of Madras took place in 1769 between Hyder Ali and English army and in this both sides they agreed to return each other territory. What they had won in during the war they agreed to return each other territory and English also committed that they will help Hyder Ali against the third party invasion and with this treaty first Anglo Mysore war and but it was not the end of but it was not the end of the wars between the Hyder Ali and English army so in this treaty what happened that territories were returned Hyder Ali he reconquer Malabar region and later in 1774 even the region of later in 1774 even the region of kurg came under his possession so this ended the first anglo mysore war but it was not the end of all the wars between english and mysore second anglo mysore war which took place in 1780 till 1784 So what was the reason of this war the main reason was that english refused to side with hyder ali in his conflict against marathas in accordance with the terms of 1769 treaty now what was this treaty this treaty was treaty of madras took place in 1769 so according to this treaty english they had committed that they will help they will help hyder ali in case of third party invasion but they didn't abide it by their this term of treaty then in july hyder ali attacked karnataka region and then in september he captured the arcot region and defeated english army under hector munro and then he marched towards the porto novo so this was the series first he attacked karnataka then arcot and then porto novo he marched towards porto novo after this second anglo mysore war then uh, second anglo mysore war took place during the time of warren hastings he was the governor general 1779 to 1785 was the time of warren hastings and warren hastings what he did as uh, english they were defeated everywhere so he replaced hector munro by ayacoot to face hyder ali then in second mysore war in, during this war french sided with the hyder ali and uh, general bassi he sent 3000 soldiers to help hyder ali french general bassi sir ayacoot he was successful in defeating hyder ali but after this in 1782 hyder ali again defeated english then because of his war injuries in 1782 he died hyder ali died in 1782 because of his war injury after that his son tipu sultan took over the power he took over the control over whole power and he continued the war against the english who tipu sultan who was the son of hyder ali tipu sultan regarding him we will talk later on he was a sworn enemy of english like his father yet he was of no match to the hyder ali as a diplomat tipu sultan first of all he imprisoned brigadier matthews who was appointed by bombay government after that lord mccartney he sent madras governor after that lord mccartney he sent governor madras governor for the treaty proposal to hyder ali do tipu sultan was himself very capable but he was not a match he was not uh, but yet he was no match to hyder ali as a diplomat now how we can know this first he removed commander in bednur region who later joined the english camp okay then this enabled the english to capture the bednur fort because if you are removing bednur fort without any struggle because uh, the commander knew all the secrets of the fort 
After that, however, English army stationed in Bombay under the commander Matthew was not that strong. Beside the English soldiers in Bednoor, they indulged in a public loot. They plundered a lot and they took advantage of such situation. After this, English army at the Bednoor region they started doing plund. They started plundering the overall region. Tipu Sultan took advantage of the situation and he put his army near the fort and recaptured it along with the Samur area. Then in seven. 1883 then in 1783 as i told you that french they were siding with tipu sultan but in 1783 because of the treaty between french and british french they left tipu sultan in midway in 1783 and even the mysore was prone to the marathas attack because of all this tipu sultan he signed a treaty which was known as the mangalore treaty in 1784 it took place between two and according to this both sides they agreed to return each other territory and release the war prisoner tipu sultan withdrew his army from the karnataka region and the english withdrew theirs from the malabar region and both parties they also promised to release the war prisoners however even after the treaty english they planned to attack mysore and because of this tipu planned a new alliance even after treaty in 1784 the war could not be averted Soon the third Anglo Mysore war took place between the English and the Mysore at that time Lord Cornwallis he was the governor general he gave Pitt's India act even after signing of Mangalore treaty in 1784 between Tipu Sultan and English war could not be averted the third anglo mysore war what happened that a situation led to a war between the two and at that time lord cornwallis was the governor general and he was appointed governor general according to the act which was that act pitts india act to establish peace and reestablish the administration pitts india act was given in 1784 according to which lord cornwallis was appointed as governor general to establish peace and reestablish the administration and it was cleared it was also cleared in this act that company will not annex any new state but even after the act cornwallis he formed a tri party with the marathas and nizam against the tipu sultan who else english marathas and nizam they formed their tri party against tipu sultan then this alignment with the british enemy what was the reason for this war the third anglo mysore war was the alignment with the british enemy and a war on a british friend travancore king travancore he was the friend of britishers and according to the tri party treaty with the marathas and nizam english agreed to divide the overall war booty of this third May- mysore war among the three among the nizam marathas and in return nizam and marathas agreed to give defense and help to the britishers and in this war first thing english they led war against the mysore from all the sides and in 1790 the first step now what was the reason for the war number 1 was the alignment with the british enemy and war on the british friend that's travancore king and because of this britishers they formed tripartite treaty according to the tripartite treaty tri in tripartite they three party treaty that was with marathas and nizam and english themselves they agreed to divide the war bu- war booty among three among themselves and in return nizam and marathas they agreed to give defense help to the britishers that marathas and nizam they will get war booty and in return they will give they will give defense to the british English they led war against the Mysore from all sides during the third Anglo Mysore war after winning first they won Mangalore then they led towards the Mysore capital Sri Rangapatna Tipu tried to protect himself he sent ambassadors for the treaty but Cornwallis denied at that time the governor general was Cornwallis then finding all the odds weighing heavy against him he tried his best to sign the treaty and at last both sides they agreed and the treaty of shrirangapatnam was signed according to this treaty 
the treaty which was signed in 1792 tipu had to lose half of his kingdom and as it was promised to nizams and maratha that they will get war booty nizam they got the area from krishna river to paneer river and marathas they got area spread till tungbhadra and english got the malabar in the west kurg area dindigul in the south bara mahal in the north then tipu they had to give a war indemnity more than 3 crores tipu tried to persuade even the king of afghanistan zaman shah to invade india zaman shah invaded punjab but due to the news of disturbances back in afghanistan and the strong opposition put up against him by the sick he had to soon go back so tipu sultan tried his best he even tried his best to get assistance from the french who were the leaders who were the european rival of english then he sent a mission to france even in 1793 but later a secret agreement was also planned and a jacobin club and a jacobin club was jacobin club was set up in shiranga patnam ga patnam and a tree of liberty was also planted and on this occasion and on this occasion prayers they were offered for the long life of tipu sultan as well as the destruction of the adversaries however the french commanders they promised no real military help meanwhile tipu was trying his best to flourish mysore state he tried to flourish in trade in industry as well as try to strengthen the mysore economically trade relations they were established with china with turkey and iran and arab countries as well and because of these political activities of tipu sultan british started preparing for another war against the mysore and this led to the fourth anglo mysore war which took place in 1799 After French Revolution Tipu had a new hope he even joined the France Jacobin Club he gave the permission to plant the freedom tree that was the tree of liberty tree of liberty in Sri Ranga Patnam and in 1798 few french came to mangalore to give help to the tipu against the english Tipu tried his best to get the international support to fight against the English because he was aware of this that English they were not happy because of his political activity. He even exchanged letters with Napoleon and sent his ambassadors to Arab countries, Kabul, Mauritius. At that time, Lord Wellesley was the Governor General of India. Lord Wellesley was the Governor General from 1798 till 1805. Lord Wellesley offered subsidiary alliance to Tipu Sultan but the later he flatly refused to accept the offer Tipu was not ready to accept the subsidiary alliance and this led this rejection by Tipu Sultan of subsidiary alliance led to the war against him on 22nd Feb 1799 the date is not very important but it Uh, from a source it was given that it was 22nd feb 1799 and meanwhile velisky he alliances with nizam and marathas and nizam committed on remaining side with english on the point of subsidiary alliance and and the three parties nizam marathas english they attack mysore from the three sides Later in May 1799 English captured Sri Ranga Patnam and this capital of Sri Ranga Patnam of Mysore it fell in May 1799 and Tipu laid down his life while fighting and there this crowning victory they made the English the master of the state of Mysore now what was the main reason of the defeat of Tipu Sultan The main reason was that he was dished by his own officials his senior officials his commanders and his finance minister and because of this he was not able to give strong resistance to the english though he himself fought very bravely after this tipu family was pensioned off and they were sent to velor and english captured mysore and in place of tipu sultan a boy of vodiar family a juvenile boy he was placed on the throne and subsidiary alliance was imposed on him so english raised the hindu descendant of vodya dynasty and krishnarayan purnia these were the officials who ditched 
Tipu Sultan, they were made his ministers. English signed subsidiary alliance with the juvenile Krishna Rai. English raised Hindu descendant of Odia dynasty Krishna Rai and Purnia, who was the official who ditched Tipu Sultan, he was made his minister. And English signed the subsidiary alliance with juvenile Krishna Rai. Now, if we see the administration of Tipu Sultan, Tipu Sultan heroic battle against the Britishers shows that that he was very brave soldier and he was efficient commander like his father. No doubt he was not as diplomatic as his father. He was a fighter, a gallant commander and a man of strong will and free determination and firm determination. 1782 after the death of his father Heather Ali, he was raised to the throne. He was capable ruler. He had a knowledge of so many languages. Our Urdu language, French, Kannar, Farsi, Arbi and he took interest in the French Revolution and also got planted Tree of Liberty in Sri Ranga Patnam. He also made an attempt to reduce the hereditary possession of the polygars. That was an attempt to eliminate the intermediary between the state and the cultivators. He also made an attempt to reduce the hereditary possessions of polygars and to eliminate the intermediaries between the state and cultivator. Then in 1796, he made an effort to build modern navy and established a dockyard at Mangalore and Molidabad and Dajidabad. After this, he was one of an innovator and his innovation shows that he desired to change with the time and that was symbolized in his introduction of a new calendar even he introduced new system of coinage new scales of weights and measures and he himself as a person he was free of all voices he had no bad app he had no bad habits and he kept himself free from the luxury he himself was a brave commander and a statesman. One of the observations of British was that that Mysore during the time of Tipu was well cultivated, was populous with industrious inhabitants and overall the economy was very stable. Because Tipu, he had a knowledge, he gave an importance to the modern trade and industry. He understood the importance of economic strength and the foundation of military strength. Under the rule of Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan, Mysore was a prosperous state. He sent, he sent emissaries to France, Turkey, Iran, Myanmar to develop foreign trade. And he even tried to set up a trading company on the pattern of European companies and thus tried, and thus tried to promote trade with Russia and Arabia by setting up state trading institutions in the port towns. Now, one point is that though he was orthodox in his religious views, but he was at the same time tolerant and enlightened in the approach towards other religion. We can cite an example from that he offered money for the construction of the image of Goddess Sharda in Sri Rangri temple. He regularly gave gifts to the temple. He even gave money for the construction of image of Goddess, which was later looted by the Maratha horsemen in 1791. Though he treated the vast majority of Hindu and Christian subjects with consideration and tolerance, but he was harsh on those Hindus and Christians who might directly or indirectly aid the British against the Mysore. Though Tipu Sultan was a great soldier and a daring commander like his father, Heather Ali, but there was a huge difference between the two. Heather Ali never used to commit mistake in assessing one's character. Heather Ali had taken up a weak and divided Mysore while Tipu inherited a powerful state. But later Tipu not only weakened it but also lost it. But the common point was that both wanted to destroy the English foothold in India. So this was all about the Mysore state. Thank you very much.